I actually picked it pretty much at random, to be honest. I just went to the Messier catalogue and picked a couple, and uh, the first one I picked, I realised you'd already done, and the next one I picked was too dull for words, and so this was the third one that I kind of happened across. I don't know very much about this galaxy, so it was actually an interesting thing for me to find out a bit more about it as well. Just a quick note for the viewers, we will go back and do that dull one. <laughs> we are doing all of them eventually. This is uh, another Fawkes telescope image, this time of M66, which is the, uh, the second galaxy in uh, LEO. Slightly different type of galaxy, it looks like a barred spiral to me. We're seeing it almost face on, I think, and you can see the bar of uh, material across here with the two spiral arms coming off. So it's sort of midway through Messier's catalogue. It wasn't one of the first ones he found. Interestingly, it was actually one of the ones he missed the first time he scanned around the sky. And he seems to have missed it because at the time he was looking at that bit of the sky, there was a comet. And he was clearly more excited by the comet than he was by the Messier objects. It's relatively nearby, so we know quite a lot about it. But it's also a little bit distorted. It's not a beautiful grand design spiral. It's a bit untidy. It's a bit asymmetric. This is the Spitzer image of this thing, so it's actually an infrared image of the galaxy, but it sort of shows the structure of the galaxy rather nicely. And you can see, although there's clearly spiral structure here, it's not like there's a beautiful grand design to it. In fact, there's this whacking great long spiral arm on one side and nothing really corresponding on the other. And in fact, if you look in the optical rather than the infrared, this little feature you can see here becomes a much more prominent dust lane, and it actually looks like this side is kind of bent. So you've got a long spiral arm on one side and the thing looks kind of warped on the other side. It's a bit of a messy galaxy. In the early days of the Fawkes telescope, there was a pointing error within the catalogue of objects available to the telescope. So it meant that all targets were actually offset to one side, um, which hasn't affected the galaxy too much because it's brought into view this uh, very bright star. And I think a lot of people new to astronomy might assume that the galaxy and the star are actually part of the same system. But in reality, all of the stars you see here in this image, um, particularly this bright one, are actually part of our own galaxy. That star is probably just within 50 or 60 light years maybe, something like that. Whereas the galaxy itself is far in the distance, lying at a distance of about 36 million light years. So this is just a kind of line of sight effect. There's a handful of other galaxies that have got very bright stars as well. There's a couple, the stars are so bright it's actually difficult to see the galaxy just because it's like a searchlight and a candle flame effectively. But um, this one's not too bad, the stars offset slightly so it doesn't really um, uh, it, you know, affect the galaxy image too much. The thing about this galaxy you need to know about it is it's got some friends. It's actually in a triplet of galaxies. One of the others is actually a messy object as well, M65, and almost certainly what's happened to this is it's undergone a strong interaction with one of those other galaxies. What happened is that this guy kind of rolled past the other one. So it, the same side of the galaxy stayed close, stayed close together for a considerable period of time. And when you have those kind of encounters, that's when you typically rip off those large spiral arms that we see in this particular case that big spiral arm pulls some of the rotational motion away from the centre of the galaxy. And because overall angular momentum is conserved, if there's more angular momentum far away from the centre, that means there's less angular momentum near the middle of the galaxy. In other words, the rotational motion of stuff near the middle of the galaxy has been lost. And when stuff stops orbiting at its proper speed, stops going around at the right speed, it tends to sink towards the middle. Now you haven't just taken these from Wikipedia. We've yeah. just done these, have we? That's right, yeah. This is, uh, this is the product of... Uh just a few minutes playing around and exposing with the 0.5 meter telescope here on La Palma. This is a two minute long exposure in the red wavelengths, but we've also got another one in the visible, which I can show you, yeah. which looks quite similar. Just about starting to pick out these features of the spiral arms. The spiral galaxies are pretty run of the mill, aren't they? Yeah, there's, there's a fair few out there. Um, the majority of them do just look like smudges when you look in one wavelength and only take one image. But if we were able to take many more images and combine them, you'd really start to see these structural features. So here's a paper from a number of years ago where somebody has been looking at this particular galaxy with a radio telescope and they've looked at it in atomic hydrogen. So this is the grey here is actually the atomic hydrogen for this galaxy. So the centre of the galaxy is somewhere around here. You can see there's actually a hole in the middle. And so the atomic hydrogen is quite a long way from the centre, but the more interesting stuff are these little contours in the middle here. This is molecular material, and it's incredibly centrally concentrated in where the molecules are. Astronomers get very excited when material gets dumped into the middle of a galaxy because there's two phenomena we witness a lot in the universe. One is a thing called nuclear starbursts, where you end up producing lots and lots of stars near the middle of a galaxy. I can guess what the other one is. What's the other one? Is it going to be a black hole? It's going to be a black hole, because again, wherever you've got, you know, most galaxies have a black hole in their middle, and when a black hole starts chomping on lots of gas falling into the middle of the galaxy, then that's when the fireworks really start in these galaxies. That black hole can light up to be as bright as the whole galaxy around it, just from the material that's falling in. 
And so this galaxy is a nearby example of kind of a, what we think is probably an early stage of both maybe its AGN, its active nucleus, its black hole in the middle switching on, becoming very bright, and one of these nuclear starbursts happening. And we've sort of caught it at a slightly earlier stage, and so we've actually learned something about the processes that then lead to these phenomena occurring. So what does the future hold then? It sounds like things are going to kick off here. They will, but we're talking probably tens to hundreds of millions of years in the future, so we're not going to be around to see it. Again, it's one of the frustrations of astronomy. Not only do we just get two-dimensional views of things, but of course we only get a single snapshot in time. We see it as it is now. And so one of the tricks in astronomy is taking those individual snapshots and trying to arrange them into a time sequence for what actually goes on. Sounds exciting, though. Sounds like it's a good oh, it's one. That's nice. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, that's the thing about, about this Messier catalogue. You know, you've, you pick one more or less at random, and then you start learning about it, and you think, well, actually, yeah, that wasn't such a dull object after all, really. And that will give you all the one digit numbers. So you can think that at the heart of the 